Sapio file. Noun. One who is attracted to intelligence. Join us, three fun loving lovers of knowledge, who are ready to dig into your favorite topics with our very own nerdy diatribes, words of wisdom, and takes on life as millennials. Welcome to the Sapio Files. I actually, Marissa's gift ended up being both enjoyable and helpful to me. So I, I got yes. a bunch of, I bought, got a bunch of RX protein bars that are pumpkin spice flavored that I love. Um, anybody that wants a good protein bar, um, it's just fruit, nuts, egg whites, and like whatever spices it is. It is. It's like, it's really good. It's all natural. It's great. I could do a commercial for it, but RX protein bar is great. Um, I also got myself hydrocortisone cream for my poison ivy that I have right now. <laughs> and, <laughs> and um, I think I ordered a Hallmark Christmas movie because, yeah, because I, I have layers. I'm complicated. I run Spartan races and then watch Hallmark when I get home. Um, hey, you know what? I love it. You're, you're a complex, emotional human. It's great. And Hallmark Christmas movies... They get a bad rap, but they are such feel good moments of this. Are, you know? But some of them are so corny, and you know what's going to happen like 15 minutes in. Oh, but of course you so do. <laughs> I don't want to watch it in May. I'm sorry, or June or July. I want to watch it during Christmas season. Here's a Hallmark movie Girl has emotional crisis in her life, goes to different location to try to deal with emotional crisis. Boy with pretty eyes. Always has the pretty eyes. That's how you know who he's going to be. He's the one with the pretty eyes. And great smile. Pretty eyes and great smile. The boy with pretty eyes and great smile. Not boy, man. I should stop saying boy. We're adults. A man with pretty eyes and great smile. You know, is mean to her at first. (laughs) Then they go through something where they, like, suddenly get close. Then they're in love. And the girl learns to love the man, love the place, and love Christmas. The end. (laughs) They they are predictable, but... And this goes back to... I, I recently re-listened to one of our pod- podcasts about literature and about how people are searching for certain themes in their lives for hope and everything. And I think especially in this day and age with how polarized so much of our country, our world is right now and how people are often placed on either side of a fence that nobody's particularly winning. Sometimes you just need a feel-good Christmas Hallmark movie that proves that like Love can conquer all. And maybe it's a little bit predictable, but life is so unpredictable these days. It's, it's almost like people are like Hallmark or Prozac. Oh, that was a perfect segue. May I also say on that note, we had also an episode on mental health. Mm-hmm. December is the shortest days in the year. For many people, that triggers seasonal affective disorder. Mm. Whether or not they have depression year-round, many people have seasonal affective disorder in December. Or not even if it's not a full disorder, they feel more down. They feel more gloomy in December. Hallmark Christmas movies come at the perfect time for that. It's it's fantastic. <laughs> you know, Hallmark Christmas movies help you stay in a good mood. This is why I also appreciate Christmas for the Twinkle Lights. Because it gets yeah. dark at freaking 4.30 at night. But then it's sparkly. <laughs> I love the sparkles. <laughs> I feel like they are... There are people that really don't like Christmas or the holidays. I should say the holidays because there's more holidays in mm-hmm. you know, November, December than Christmas. And there are people who are like, they like it, but it's like, you know, yeah, it comes once a year. We enjoy it. And then there are the Buddy the Elf Christmas people. And that's <laughs> me. Like, you are. That is 100% me. Like, I'm like, let's go Christmas caroling for charity. And then let's bake cookies and let's give cookies to these people. And then let's do a coat drive for the less fortunate. And like, and I get like so into it. So like Christmas ends up being a thing that I like just associate with happiness. So when I am having a bad day, I will occasionally pop in a Christmas movie. I don't care if it's May or if it's October. Christmas, you know. Yeah. Christmas. I know, because when I lived with you, you had um, the mistletones on always the frequently watched on the Netflix. <laughs> And it was like July, and I'm like, we frequently watch Mistletones. Cool. Yeah, Chelsea looks, and I'm like watching, like it's a Wonderful Life. It's it's September. Chelsea's like, okay, yeah. that's what she does. Because I can see, I can see your Netflix activity. Sometimes, actually, I go, I log in as you to see what you watch to get ideas for what to watch. And sometimes I do see Christmas movies in like July. I love the classics. You know, it's just they don't make movies the way they used to. 
Like I love all like the legendary like actors and actresses and and movies in black and white like from the golden age of Hollywood. It's just I don't know why. I just love it so much. Yeah, um my friend Joanna who was a guest host during our mental health awareness podcast also is a huge fan of the classic films. Mm. She yeah. she loves all of them. She can quote them Another verbatim thing have in common. <laughs> Well, some of them are great. Like, even things like, um, like the Marilyn Monroe films. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I want to say underrated, but they're not so much watched anymore. Right. Great. Like, you know, like, some like it hot. Such a great movie. Mm -hmm. I just have a lot of respect for Marilyn Monroe because she was known for her boobs, but her IQ was like freaking like 160 something. So, so much respect for that woman. And like, she put up with the kind of society that objectified her. And that's what she was known for. But if you dig into, like, what she said during her life, such a brilliant woman who got overlooked because she was a blonde with boobs. Yeah, I I also think that um, I 100% agree with you, Chelsea, with Marilyn Monroe. Um, I've mm-hmm. done some research on her as well since you um, you brought that up initially, and I did research afterwards because that's what I do. A lot of the old films, and again, I just listened to our literature one again um, and adaptations, and all three of us made mention of the fact that we enjoy books more because it leaves more for the scope of the imagination. But I feel like their films also did the same thing. Like films like Rear Window. Mm-hmm. Good film. Phenomenal acting, directing, producing. Oh, that? Film. I, think I saw, but who was in that? What one was that? Remind- uh, that was um, Rear Window is, is an Alfred mm-hmm. Hitchcock film. Yeah. And it is Grace Kelly and... George Bailey. Um, No, that yeah. guy. Um, yeah. Why can't I think of his name? It's not home. I can't think of it. Jimmy, Jimmy Stewart, Jimmy Stewart, Jimmy Stewart. Yes. So Jimmy Stewart. Yes. Um, and just like how the camera angles were, and it was almost more terrifying because he was great at cinematography. Yeah. Yeah. You couldn't see everything. And then, um, don't get me wrong. I've watched the film Disturbia several times, but it was a remake of your window. It was made when we were, I believe we were in college, um, when it was filmed. But it showed everything, and it was less scary than Rear Window, which left everything up for the imagination, or at least a lot yes. of it. Um, and I think that for as technologically advanced as we are with our CGI and with everything that we can do, there was something so amazing about, like, when you're watching Jurassic Park for the first time, and just yeah. that amount of fear they invoke by showing your water glass rippling. Like, I feel like a lot of that is lost in today's movies. By the way, what, I don't have my Fitbit on. What time is it, guys? It's 11-11. It is. Make a wish. Okay. Make a wish, everybody. Even if it's not 11-11 when you're listening to this, make a wish. Mm. Mm. Okay. Uh, I got one. I got one. Um, wrap up soon. Uh, they, all the listeners already know I have poison ivy, but I also just took Benadryl for the poison ivy, so I'm starting to get a little tired. Oh, yeah. Benadryl K is fun. <laughs> Thanks for joining us again this week for our mini-sode. We'll be back again next week with another full-length episode. If you would like to join the conversation, leave us a comment, or tell us a little about you, you can find us on email at sapiophilespodcast at gmail.com, on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at The Sapiophiles. And always remember to rate us and leave us a comment wherever you listen to this podcast. Have a great week. Stay curious.